All right, welcome back for another video. So this is gonna be a, a short video on how to do a pickoff cutoff for the DS30Y. So if you take a look here, um, basically what I've done is I've created all the first operations on the front side of this part, and I'm ready to pick this part off with the sub spindle, pull it, cut it off, and then bring it back, and then I'll be ready to do the second side of the sub spindle. So to do this, um, this is a highly customized post, just to be clear. So this will not work with everybody's post the way that I'm going through it. Uh, it will only work with our post. Um, if you would like to have your post customized, so it's like this one, or so that it works in a way that yours does, uh, you should contact uh, your reseller, Mastercam reseller, ask for postability to build you a post or modify you a post. Uh, that's who did ours. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead, go ahead and get started here. So, I'm going to come up. I'm going to pick. First, I'm going to make sure my red arrow is the bottom. I'm going to pick pick off, cut off, pull, pick off, pull, cut off. Um, stock to pick off. It's in the left spindle. Check. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I click on the pick off, bar, pull, cut off. And some of these are already filled in. I didn't want to waste time. So, the length of my finished part. I'm gonna put that in. Here's the part we're making, 0.85 long. So we got 0.85. Uh, pick off Z coordinate. I want that to be essentially, if I go to top here, I want it to be about a half inch back. To this here, the beginning of this chamfer, the beginning of this angle is 0.55. I don't wanna be right up against that. So I'm just gonna go about a half inch back. So it's front of the spindle or the front of the jaws or the front of the collet, whatever you have in your machine. I should grip right around here. Uh, next, I'm going to go to my cutoff width, and I'm actually just going to select a tool. So for this, I'm actually going to choose a left-handed cutoff tool here. And if you ha what you have to do initially is bring it up. If you don't have one up here, you can grab it from here, double-click it, and or you can drag and drop it, and then you select it and hit check. And it's automatically going to pull that width in for you. Uh, it's advantageous to pick the tool so that it has the correct tool number and all that stuff. Um, and we may have to go in and change that. So right here, this one here is 500 and something. So I'll go in and change that later. So it doesn't, my tools aren't set up. But if you did have tools set up, you could pick it and it would have the correct tool number already in there for you. So go ahead and hit check. Uh, next, cutoff X coordinate. So basically, what you'll note here is that this is a one, is a radial dimension. So by putting four or five in there, essentially what I'm telling it is 0.9 is where I want to start cutting off at. Face stock, this is how much I want to leave on for my next part that it's going to do in the main spindle. So I'm going to leave 10 thousandths on the face so that when I run the next cycle, it's going to come down and it can face 10 thousandths off. Back face stock, I'm going to leave 0.01 on that. So when I finish it on the sub spindle, I can come over and I can face the backside of that too. Now, do you need this? No. If you're getting a good finish with your cutoff tool, you, you don't necessarily need it. I always like to finish it with a nice face. Uh, then there's no, there's no chance that I'm going to get a bad finish here and there. It's going to be consistent. I know that. Uh, so once you have all this stuff done, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into operations and you're going to click on each operation. So for this one here, it's pre-positioning our cutoff tool. So again, this is just a radial dimension. So if I say eight, it is gonna put the tool at 16 inch diameter, and this is a pre-position. So I want this way up in the X. That way when my sub-spindle comes in, my tool is definitely gonna be above the sub-spindle. Uh, and then I'm gonna pre-position at, I really can pre-position at zero because I'm gonna pull this before I cut it off anyway. So I don't know exactly where that, I haven't calculated where that Z position is going to be. But if I put it at zero, it's, it's, not, it's going to be no more than an inch from, from where, from zero, essentially. So I'm just going to leave it at zero. Um, in fact, it, really, I know it's going to pull it out an inch. So I'm actually just going to make it positive 1.0. Um, we'll put it there and uh, we'll go from there. So next, it's the pick off spindle, unclamp, and eject part. Here I have to check my custom parameters, and I have to make sure that I have a five, 
or put a spindle speed in for my transfer speed. And I also want to have my chuck dwell for two seconds. That prevents it from not closing in time. So it'll dwell, make sure that it closes, and then it'll do the next operation. So it's super important that we have a two, two, at least a two second dwell in there. Next operation, move to clearance distance. So this is, now my sub spindle is gonna wrap it in and come to a clearance distance. So I'm just gonna make that 0.5. Uh, I don't need anything in here for this. I have this 10 in here, but that doesn't need to be there for this one. Move to grip position. Again, I'm gonna go into my custom parameters. And I'm going to make sure that I have 10 for the feed rate. So that way it feeds back at 10 inches a minute. Uh, just basically feeding onto the part with the spindle, the subspindle open. And then the next operation, we're going to clamp down on it. And this doesn't have to be 10. I can make it 20, whatever I feel comfortable with. But I do want it to be a feed rate. So clamp. And I'm going to go ahead and look at this. Just make sure that I have a two in there. So anytime I'm clamping or unclamping the spindle, I'm going to make sure I have a two second dwell. Here I got an unclamp. Also, I'm going to make sure I have a two second dwell in there. Um, pull stock. Let's take a look at that. So here I have a, a 30. It's, it's, not, it's not actually going to abide by that 30. In fact, I don't even, I'm just going to make it what I had in the other one. Uh, you don't need anything in that one. Uh, spindle stock, spindle clamp. So I need to make sure I have my two in there. I do. Cut off part. Here, I'm going to select a tool. I want to make sure I have the right tools. Whoops, wrong one. Uh, cut off operation. Use tool from operation. So I'm going to hit select tool, and I'm going to make sure I got the correct tool that I had there. All right, so it was already the correct tool, but I wanted to go through that so you could see it. Um, if you already had selected, you can't select another one really easy. You have to unclick it, hit select tool again, and then grab it. Make sure you have it. Uh, pick off spindle retract. So this one here, the only thing you're going to change in here is when this spindle cuts off and it's ready to go back, the, the uh, sub spindle is ready to go back to its position, you're going to want to make sure that it's going back to a G55 position, which is what you're going to set in the machine, the location of your sub spindle for doing your, your uh, backside turning. All right, let's go ahead and make this. Let's go ahead and check. So it's going to pop out a bunch of operations here. And... Let's take a look. So there's a couple edits that we have to make after it's created. We have to go into our eject part. And we need to unclick eject part because we're not going to actually eject the part as we're coming up to, um, basically as we're coming up with the sub spindle to grab the next part. We're not going to eject it. We're going to do that at a different time. Um, go ahead and hit check. So that'll fix that. And I'm going to regenerate these. Um, next, I'm going to look at my cutoff part here, and I'm just going to change my, my spindle speed there, get that up to 500, um, max to be 3000, and I'll tweak those out the machine if I need to adjust those. Um, I'm going to take this to 0.2, there is a hole through this, that is the correct, but I want to go a little bit past, that would be the correct dimension. Um, yeah, so everything looks pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit check. Regenerate that. And let's go ahead and post this code. And let's see what we got here. So I'm going to hit post. I'm just going to select that pick off cutoff operations or well, the, what is it, like eight different operations there. Uh, name this sleeve, yes, check. And let's see if we missed anything here. Okay, so coming down, it's just homing itself out. The M15 is telling it that we're working on the main spindle. Um, has that in there again, it's just you know, redundant. All right, so here we have a tool number. This is our cutoff tool. Now we may want to change that tool number because that's that's kind of a goofy tool with a goofy number offset. 
um, M155s just telling us, hey, uh, you know, you're not act deactivating your uh, live tooling. G54, J18, plane, okay. G0Z, 1.125. So that's just pre-positioning. So this is where our pre-position is. Then here it's opening the sub-spindle. Here it's dwelling for two seconds. Here it is synchronizing the spindles. So it's synchronizing the sub and main spindle so that they're spinning and they're gonna pick off while it's spinning. Obviously they have to be if we're gonna cut it off. Um, the, other the other thing that's advantageous to this is that when they're spinning, it's throwing any chips that are in there out, hopefully. Any chips that are in the jaws, hopefully it'll get them out if you don't have an air blast. And, and we don't have an air blast. So we got synchronized. Uh, we're dwelling to make sure that gets up to speed. Then we're going G54 and we're pre-positioning to our 0.5 with the sub-spindle. Sub-spindle's coming up to half inch in front of the part. Uh, we're changing a G98 feed per inch. We're feeding back to negative 0.5 at 20 inches a minute, like we specified. We're closing the second, closing the sub spindle, dwelling for two seconds to make sure it's closed, opening the main spindle, dwelling for two seconds to make sure that it's open. Then we are pulling the stock to positive 0.495. So if you think about that, we have a, we have an 850 thousandths part. So we're gonna pull it at least 850, okay? Um, so the difference between this negative 0.5 and this should be 850 plus our cutoff tool 125, which would give us um, 0.975 plus 10 for our face on the main spindle part, 10 for our back face on the sub spindle part. So that would give us 0.5. 495. So it would give us basically 995 would be our total pull length. And negative 5 plus this, that's, that's how much is pulling. So it's accurate. We're right. That's the right position. So once we've pulled it, we're going to go ahead and close the main spindle. And we're going to dwell for two seconds. Uh, so once we dwell, we're going to dwell so that it closes. Then we're going to cut off the part. Okay, so we got a G54, uh, G97. Okay, so here's an error. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. So it is starting the spindle up at a goofy speed, uh, but then we're going to our location, wrapping to an X clearance location, and then we're putting our spindle cap on, our uh, spindle clamp max speed that we can go. Then we're putting our G60 or G96S500 on. So we're going to put constant surface speed on there. So that, that does change. Um, that's a weird number it threw in there for some reason. But it doesn't matter. Um, then we're wrapping in to 1.3. And then we're going to start our cutoff. So we go ahead and cut off. And it writes this cutoff kind of funny. It, it actually comes into 0.38. And then it feeds back out a little. And then it rapids back out. Will it work? It's fine. It's goofy. It's not the way I would write it. Uh, but it'll work just fine. So no worries there. Uh, then we're wrapping up to 16. We're canceling our synchronize spindle command, turning the spindles off, and coming down. Okay, so here we are wrapping back to G55B0. So that is exactly what I want to see. So that code is perfect. Um, that will work perfectly for picking off, pulling, and cutting off a, uh, a part in our DS30 lathe. So hopefully this is helpful um, when you're using the pick-off cutoff. A couple of notes that I want to mention is that if you get something wrong here, so most of the time you have to just delete everything and start over. Now when you start over, it will have most of your values in there, so you don't really need to go back and do everything again because it'll automatically default to everything you entered. So all you need to do is change the number that you entered wrong. Um, if you try and change a lot of stuff in these, it can mess things up. And when you post your code, the code will 
it, it won't be right. It'll, it'll be out of order. Or sometimes it'll set it home before it cuts it off. It'll do weird things. So if you get something wrong, like majorly wrong, um, then chances are you probably need to just delete this whole thing and just recreate it again. So hopefully this is helpful, and uh, you know, hopefully your part turns out well.